Tom is here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am once again working on my Red Hood cosplay. I've had a lot of people interested in this as I teased it like over a year and a half ago now. I don't know why I've kept pushing it over to the side. I was also building the Viking Link thing, which I got really into, and then a number of other things just drew my attention away from this build. But it's 2024, I am ready to uh, get some cosplays done this year apparently. Uh, I've purchased a lot of things in preparation for this cosplay. I have a jacket, a hood, some pants, some gloves, a utility belt, gun holsters, guns, combat boots. I have a lot of things pre-prepped and ready to go. I just need to customize them a little bit. And now it's time for me to build out the rest of the things. So I'm thinking a chest armor that you'll barely be able to see under the jacket and the hood, but it'll be there. Maybe some gauntlets to jazz it up a little, and then some shin guards down at the bottom just to give some interest at the bottom of the costume. Um, I, I don't know that I want to necessarily base it off of any one Red Hood costume because there's lots of them out there, different versions and variations. I know Steve over at SKS did an awesome chest plate armor that I seriously eyeballed for a, for a good long time thinking maybe I could just customize his, but I'm a very large guy. I'm six foot three, 250 pounds, and I have an extremely large elongated torso. So a lot of times when I try and build something that somebody else is, even if I'm talking about in terms of scale, it usually makes it too wide for me. So I'm gonna have to make this custom for myself from scratch and I'll share the process along with you. So without further ado, let's build some chest plate armor for my Red Hood cosplay. Let's go 2024! I started by folding a piece of poster board in half and holding it up to my torso. I marked just below my collarbone and just above my waistline to get how tall it should be. Then I marked just below my armpit to know how far over it should be. This is all guesswork. It was a rough sketch I began with. Looking for reference images online, I looked at a bunch of variants of the costume and picked bits and parts that I liked on each to combine to make my own. After it was drawn, I cut layers apart, added tabs on certain pieces to allow for overlays, labeled and colored coded parts, and guessed at sizes for foam that I would need. After several hundred of these templates, it gets easier to do this, but it, it takes practice. This is what I eventually came up with after about two hours or so of drawing out ideas. Now with the game plan in hand, I can begin tracing the parts onto my different thicknesses of EVA foam which are labeled on every part. Hopefully the pattern will make sense as I begin to break it apart and trace. My patterns are always free and listed down in the description below the videos, the last link on the information.
On all of my patterns, I have an instruction page that explains all the markings, colors, and any other additional information that you may need to build yourself. I still get a lot of questions, so feel free to ask in the comments if you are unsure about something. The red lines on the pattern are lines I will burn in with a wood burner. The dotted blue areas are where overlays should be placed, and tabs with red slash lines are areas where alignments will correspond with other bits. For the abs and the obliques, I cut off the parts, sand over any rough cuts and round over the top edges. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area while sanding or burning foam. You don't want to breathe in the dust or the fumes. I use barge contact cement to join my pieces together. I'm starting with the obliques, at least I think that's what they're called on the body. At least I had them when I was younger, now I think they're called love handles. Love handles didn't really sound like a tough label to put on an armor part, so we'll go with obliques. Cover both parts with contact cement, give it a few minutes to set up, and then tack them together. Abs work in a similar fashion as the previous step. I like to keep my pattern close by so that I don't get too confused on placement of all the parts. It also helps to trace the position onto the overlays for the corresponding pieces. This not only helps with placement, but also prevents you from using too much glue or having to clean up over glued areas later. I wrote L's and R's with numbers on them on mine to keep the sides right. Typically, I label them from how they will lie on the body, so when you look Look at them visually, it looks like it's backwards. Hopefully that's not too confusing and makes sense now. With the abs and the obliques finished for the most part, I can now join together the pieces. Marking my tabs helps me position them equally on both sides. Once the parts are together, I try and sand down the top tab of the abs to transition it better across the oblique area so that the chest plate can lie flat across that top ridge without any gaps.
For the pecs, I need to shape them a little bit before I glue them to the rib overlay. You could probably get away with doing it after, but 10 millimeters is a lot easier to heat form than the combined 16 millimeters that the two parts would be after glue up. I use a metal bowl that found in the kitchen but I'm telling my wife and pushed it over the top of. It doesn't take a lot of shaping to get a nice form to add dimension to the build. You want it to conform to a person's body. Cupping the pec muscles forces the base layer to conform to its shape and helps it to reinforce the curve. You will probably have to trim off a little bit around the collar and armpit to make it flush with the layers. I also went ahead and added a bevel to the edges of the chest plate. Time to glue up the chest plate to the lower torso pieces. The heat forming of the upper will slightly force the abs into a subtle curve as well. If you need more of a curve or help it fit better across your body, you can always heat up an area and coerce it into submission somehow. I figured that mine would conform once I put the buckles and strapping on the back so that I can get it tight fitting to myself. Instead of just a plain single layer for my chest emblem, I decided to design an overlay that would add a nice little detail. Just like the rest of the build so far, I attach it with contact cement and then glue the whole assembly to the chest armor. Now, you could definitely add a backplate if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure that Steve over at SKS did that on his build, but I know that for my cosplay, it's not going to be needed. You're not going to see it. The costume is designed so that there's a hood and a jacket over the top of it, and I don't intend on taking pictures or anything else without those pieces on. So I'm just going to add enough of a shoulder strap to go about even with my neckline to the back. From there, it'll just be straps that secure it to the back in the middle. I'll do a second video on strapping and lighting to go in more detail about those things later.
This step is not necessary and it probably will barely be seen in photos, but I thought it would be fun to make some fake buckles on the front of my shoulder straps. You could also just as easily add real ones here instead and make it functional. I had some ordered, but they didn't show up in time for this video to get pushed out on Friday, so I had to kind of come up with something to put a detail up there and not make them look basic. It's pretty awesome what you can do with just a couple of different thicknesses of foam and a little creativity. Two coats of Plasti Dip. A majority of this build I am going to leave as just plain black Plasti Dip. I need to paint the emblem a bright red to match my helmet and maybe a few metal accents as well. I'm not sure if I want the weathered look or not, so I'm gonna leave it clean for now. I may change my mind once the costume is fully assembled. I just added two or three layers of this acrylic paint down to get good coverage. I also painted a couple of areas with black mixed with just a little bit of metallic silver. It's a subtle finish difference between the Plasti Dip and the acrylic paint, but under the correct lining, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm also going to add some EL wires and lights to this piece later, so I want to keep it relatively simple, and also because you're barely going to see this part, just a little sliver in the middle of the costume. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Well, kind of the end result. I still need to add lighting and strapping to it. I've ordered things, they just haven't come in yet. I thought that could probably be a separate build in and of itself, showing you how adding lighting and strapping and actual materials to the foam can make it look that much more realistic. Um, but this is definitely a good base to start off of, and it'll only be a tiny portion that you'll be able to see within the costume. Um, this was the part I was most nervous about. I have more experience with helmets and masks, so those things to me are easy. Things like this that are big structural parts, I get so nervous about getting the details just right and getting proportions right, and I kind of psych myself out of doing it. This is why it's taken me so long to build this portion of it, because I kept like thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this in a week. Um, even after 10, 15,000 hours of building in this room, I still doubt myself, doubt my skill sets. And it's kind of like that old adage, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Pick out a certain portion of it and build that part. Once you get that part built, then you've got some reference to go for the next part and the next part till you've chunked it out enough that it just kind of starts to flow. Um, I didn't know exactly how it was going to look in the end, so 
not having that in mind kind of adds into that self-doubt, but I, I really like the way it turned out and it's getting me pumped up to finish this build. So maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to finally bite the bullet and um, just do it. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? If you give them one of these, tell them much props. It's time to um, get building on the rest of it, huh? If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together. Thank you.